so it's Mother's Day. <laughs> what does that mean? It means it's a day that we're supposed to feel good. But I woke up feeling funky. That's the only way that I can put it. I feel flat and I feel funky. And I shouldn't because it's a day that was designed to celebrate me. Someone that was able to raise a child, whether I brought the child into this world by birth, by cesarean, naturally, adoption, fostering, by chance. Being a mother means I'm raising a child and hopefully raising this child to be the best possible version of themselves. I have struggled today. I woke up funky. But what I've really decided to do is put my thoughts into this afterthought. I don't even know if I should call it an afterthought because there were no pre-thought, but it's just a thought. And sometimes I find these uh, processes therapeutic to get out everything that's in my heart. And I've decided that I shouldn't be so hard on myself today because it's okay not to be okay on Mother's Day. And even though I should feel gra- glad and proud that I am raising a beautiful, wonderful human being who every day when I look at her, I feel inspired and I feel motivated. She gives me courage to challenge whatever is in front of me. It's okay not to feel that you've achieved everything that you want to achieve. I don't feel it today. Do I think that I could have done better as a mum? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to hold my hands up and say that I do. There's some days that I'm not present. Some days that I'm so in my head thinking about the achievements that I didn't achieve, the goals that have not been met, the methods that I've tried and failed. Does she go to bed on time? No, she doesn't because I'm still struggling. Five years on with a sleep pattern. I've read books, I've looked on YouTube, I've consulted friends and family. And she still needs to go to sleep on my lap every evening with me rubbing her back. Am I setting her up to fail? Am I giving her a sense of dependence on me? And I've asked myself, do you want that dependence? Is it because I don't have a partner that I actually like the cuddle in the evening? And to know that someone else is reliant on me? I think she probably could improve her bedtime routine if I were stricter, if I were more disciplined, and maybe if I wasn't so needy myself. Do I think that she would mind sleeping for the rest of her life on my lap? Probably not because I know she loves her mum. But I want her to be independent. I want her to be a bit of me. I want her to be able to take on whatever it is in the world that she needs to. Do I want her to eat more vegetables? Of course I do. Sometimes a diet's a bit beige. And I know, nutrition-wise, that's not good. But do I have the energy? When I finish working, when I finish working, I log on to parenting. I log on to cleaning, I log on to mopping, I log on to that dirty stove. You know that bit between the stove and the cupboard that there's nothing that ever gets in between there and I don't have the strength at the end of the day to pull out the stove. I don't. So it's a hot disaster behind there and I ignore it. I mop around it. Do I want a man to come and pull forward my oven? I think I do. So on this Mother's Day, I wonder what can I do differently? What can I do better? Could I do more phonics? If I, I don't even get this phonics malarkey. Ba, ka, see, I don't even know it. Ah, ba, sa, I don't know. Have I educated myself enough? No, I haven't. But I ask myself, do you have the time? Do I have the time to teach myself on YouTube about phonics in 2021? No, I don't. Should I? Yes, I should. I say I don't have the time, but I scroll on the gram. I produce podcasts for my entertainment and hopefully yours. I'm doing something like this. I'm sitting down chatting shit about motherhood for probably the next half an hour. Could I be learning phonics in that time? Yeah. But do I want to? No. I don't want to. I don't want to feel that every waking moment should be about motherhood. 
just because I'm a mother, why do I feel that everything has to be about motherhood, has to be about my child, has to be about raising another human being? That's a lot of responsibility. That's a lot of stress. Sometimes when I don't even feel like making dinner, I have to. Because she's there and she needs to eat. And it's okay sometimes that I bang things in the oven. You know what it is because she's eating. I cook probably five out of seven days. And I tried to cook nutritiously balanced food and hide the veg in the meat and whatever. But why do I still feel like there's so many areas that I fail? So many areas that I just don't get right. I want her to be more sociable. I want her to feel that she doesn't have to be attached to me by the hip. I wonder sometimes if she has separation anxiety and I wonder if I created that. Because even though I want the break when she's not here, I miss her. Because she's my everything. She's my world. She's the way that I breathe. She's the way that I interact with others. She gives me that spice. She's given me that vavavoon back. But she also takes that away. Because she depletes my energy sometimes. And sometimes I don't have anything to give anybody else because everything is taken. I feel sometimes that I felt because she's alone. She doesn't have the family that I wanted her to have. I wanted her to wake up. I wanted today in an ideal world to be her dad, having taken her to get me a card and to get me some balloons and they give me breakfast in bed. And they come and they burst in the room and they say, happy Mother's Day. And they say, we've got this, mum. You watch Netflix and chill. And I can hear them laughing and playing music and potting around the house. While I listen to my church service and I just enjoy my me time. But I feel that I failed in that. I don't have that nuclear family for her anymore she has a very disjointed relationship with her father not to and I won't blame myself at all for that I want to put it out there right now but I believe their relationship will be better and I want it to be better because every girl needs her dad in the most extensive intimate passionate way that a father can love their child and I say intimate in the point that he knows her she knows him not sexually but intimately I wanted to enjoy Mother's Day the way that the movies show me that Mother's Day is supposed to be. That I am pampered and go for a pedicure and maybe go for lunch with a friend and come back to a really clean house and dinner cooked and we watch a movie before bedtime. She goes to bed on time. I kiss her on her forehead. But that's just a movie, you know. And what we live is reality. And I'm sure many of those who've chosen to listen to this today, my, my, my vision is not to depress you, but to let you know that your reality is sometimes other people's realities, that it's not the fantasy that's on television, that we are not to live in this fantasy. We are living the real stuff. Sometimes I feel that I felt that I've met, given her just her. I wanted to have other children. But as I'm on the cusp of my 39th birthday, I'm wondering, is that even possible now? Um, I don't want to be an old mom. I want to run and jump and tickle and do gymnastics and do TikTok videos as I do with her. Every day I do something creative. We make something, we paint something. Not everything goes on the gram. Not half of the things I do for her goes on the gram. So I guess if you weren't within these walls, you'd never know. But she's loved and she's fulfilled. And I'm sure she feels so. And I want to feel so. I desperately thought that when I had a baby, it would complete me. I really thought that having my baby would complete every part that was missing in my soul. And I want to say it didn't. It filled a portion of it but what I'm beginning to realize is that only I can fulfill me I have to find the bits that make me tick and make me happy and resonate with me 
Do I want another child? Yes, but am I prepared to be a single parent of two? No. Am I prepared to settle for another relationship that fails to show her what love doesn't look like again or him? No. So as a single child, she has to be given the love and the passion I can give her as her mum. I wonder about the men that I date and what, what impact that will have on her, whether I should just stay on my own because I don't want to hurt her in any way, shape or form again. I don't want her to be exposed to anything that is not good and, and happy. She deserves everything. I am so grateful to be a mum because I know there are women out there People that are close to me, that would be the most amazing mothers on earth. They love their nieces, nephews, family, sisters, like, like some mothers don't love theirs. And I wonder, as a Christian even, what's God's plan for them and why wouldn't they let them experience this? But I'm faithful and I'm hopeful that they will feel that they are mothers, whether it's not biologically, but they f will feel the, the strength that I feel as being a mother in whatever capacity they need to feel it. And I pray that God fulfills them with their journey in the way that their journey was supposed to be ordained and how their steps were supposed to be structured. I know there are going to be mothers that are thinking, you are so ungrateful to sit here moaning. This is a day for us. Pick up yourself. Put your big panties on. Not every day you can put your big panties on. You know? Not every day I can be killer cam, super mum, superhero, super, super, super. But this is early hours of the morning and I know that I do put those big panties on. By 10 o'clock, I'm back. I would have had my coffee. I'd have had my crumpet. And I would have heard, mom, 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 nine million times by then. And the automatic switch of motherhood sets in. And even though her dad wouldn't have given me a card or even though he wouldn't have thought to give her anything to give me, I know she loves me because it's not about gifts. I know she, she thinks that I am the best mom in the world. And really and truly, that's all that matters. And this is my second day without my mom. And I miss her. I miss her more than anyone could ever imagine. There are questions that I have about motherhood that sometimes only a mother could answer. I borrow a friend's mom, so I borrow friends and ask them. But really and truly, I just want to ask my mom. I want to say, mom, she's got a really chesty cough but the medicine's not working what can I do and I want her to say girl you just need to go and buy some ginger and boil it up and make sure you put the cloves you know that's what I want to hear I want to hear her I want to hear her accent I want to feel my mum hug me and I want to tell my mum happy mother's day she the best mum in the world to me she was She may have not felt so. Her depression, her anxiety, and her sickness may have felt that she failed me as I sometimes feel that I fail mine. But no matter where she is right now, I just want to tell you, mum, that I love you. And I know you did the best for me. And I'm hoping I do the best for mine. And as I close on this short Mother's Day rant <laughs> girls we got this and I'm hoping that next Mother's Day we will be raised and glorified and we will wake up feeling inspired to be the best versions of ourselves and mothers that we could possibly be all we have is ourselves and only ourselves and change our outcomes so as I end this I'm going to get up I'm going to find the biggest old school panties that go over my belly that I can 
and I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to wash out those dishes. I'm going to put on the fourth load of washing for the weekend. I'm going to mop the living room. I'm going to play some tunes. I'm going to tell myself, happy Mother's Day. And I want to tell you all out there, happy Mother's Day, girls. <laughs>